The next entrepreneurs into the den are friends Tom Wilday and James Culthurst. Very serious faces. Why so serious? And they're hoping to bring some good cheer with their novel idea. Hopefully we can get them smiling a little bit more once yeah. they've uh, seen our book. There's never been anything made like this before uh, and we really feel like there is a huge space for it in the market. Their aim is to inspire a new generation with their positive message. As well as making money, we're looking to educate as many children as possible out there on sustainability, recycling and uh, the potential of our environment around us. Hello Dragons, I'm James. Hi, and I'm Tom. And together we've produced the first ever plantable children's vegetable book. We're here today to ask for £20,000 for 10% stake of our business, Wilso Limited. Never before have you been able to read a story, plant the pages to meet the main character. Every single one of our books has 500 seeds in. So once you finish the story, you plant the pages to grow real vegetables. Our aim at Wilso is to get children spending less time in technology and more time reading and having fun in the outdoors. As soon as we got the book into people's hands, we knew it'd be a success. So we set out to sell to as many garden centres and gift shops as we could. However, COVID-19 quickly put the brakes on that plan. So we acted fast and began to work with a number of online resellers and e-shops, as well as developing the advertising for our own website. We've been trading for just under 12 months and to date we've sold 2,400 copies and we've turned over 21,000 pounds. Thank you, Dragons. That concludes our pitch. But just like our books, the end of the story is just the beginning. So now we'd like to invite you to start your very own Read Me, Seed Me adventure. Plantable children's books are the proposition on offer from Tom Wilday and James Culthurst. Um, once you uh, read the story, cut the back page. If you follow the dotted lines, then you can uh, plant the page in, in, in the pots there. They're willing to give away a 10% stake in their business in return for a £20,000 investment. So literally just plant the page. Yeah. yeah. And then in half an hour it becomes a tree. Half an hour, yeah, you've got it, yeah. Then you climb up the tree. And take the investment. <laughs> <laughs> and in a bid to get that fairy tale funding, Tom has something he prepared earlier. These are the size of the carrots that have grown from, from the books. Crafting Queen Sarah Davies is the first to dig into the vegetable venture. I love it. Oh, thank you very I much. I don't know if you know, I've got two young children. We do loads of outdoor planting. And when I had kids, my mum and dad, they actually bought an allotment okay. so that they could teach their grandkids everything they need to know about growing their own food. Wow, great. So you've got my heart. I see if you can get the head as well. Okay. Um, walk me through some of the financials. That so you know what do the books cost to make you, and uh, what profit do you make on them? Yeah, so they cost us one pound fifty each to make. Um, the RRP is nine ninety nine. Sorry, nine ninety nine for for one book or a pack of two? At one book. One book. Yeah. Wow. It seems quite pricey. It feels to me like a. In a garden centre, you know, one of those spinners with loads of different things on, yep. like at a, a, at a 4 .99 price point or something, you could be onto a winner with it. Yeah. Um, so from that, um, because we're the first of its kind, it's very difficult to, to go anything, any other market um, research. But from that, you can get wildflower uh, thank you cards um, and gift cards. And they're retail, just a card, it's 4 99 and there's no educational purpose in that. So we feel that with our creativity to get children outside to go towards the 9.99 process. I totally agree with you. It is a really unique concept. I've never seen or heard of anything like this before, so yeah. that sounds great. A strong start from the planting pair, as they assuredly allay Sarah Davies' concerns of an expensive price tag. Now Tej Lalvani wants to investigate the company's potential for growth. Your, your business has done, what, £20,000, you said, in the first year? Yeah. Yep. It's a small business. I mean, you need to demonstrate to me that it's got room for an investor to come on board yep. Yep. to get their return. So you've talked about retail. Tell me about what other avenues are there. Have you tried selling it online? Yeah, so uh, this year, roughly, well, pretty much exactly 50% of our business has been online. And we've got our own um, website. And do you sell on Amazon? We don't, we don't sell on Amazon. Why haven't you gone on there out of interest? Yeah, I think, I think we just we felt like it would easily get lost on there. And also, we had it on our own website at the time. It's just that surprising because you've got a huge amount of traffic. I think, I think we, as well, we're 
fairly focused on getting it into uh, physical retail, but it's, it's definitely something we can definitely something we can do. Despite not seeing eye to eye with Tej Lalvani on the preferred route to market, the vegetable entrepreneurs show a willingness to take on board the Dragon's point of view. Sustainability is a passion for Green Queen Deborah Meaden. Will this botanical book be a perfect addition to her portfolio? Listening to you, I've got to say, so here's the bad news. There's a lot of wrong thinking going on here. I don't like your brand at all. Will so doesn't inspire a child. You know, it needs to talk to me as a child. I want to get excited by it. And I guess my question behind that was subscriptions drive me mad because everybody thinks, well, if I can't sell a product, I'll put it on a subscription, it'll sell. But actually, I can see a Christmas present for a child that actually says every month you get your book and you get something to plant because this is a letterbox product. You know, it goes in an envelope, you put it through the letterbox. Kids run up to that letterbox, they go, yay, brilliant, it's here. And I'm getting excited because, because you haven't done all of these things, you know. It's just like <laughs> if you were standing here going, yeah, well, I'm brilliant at this and I've got online and I know what... I think, well, what, no, what, what are we doing that. here? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that could be good. What is it that you do? What do you do in your real life? Yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an account manager at the moment for a sports nutrition business, so I do this in my spare time, so... A lot of late nights and long weekends and a, a very patient girlfriend. Um, so I'm a printer. I'm part of a, a fourth generation pr family printing business. My great granddad and, and granddad set it up and hopefully it, I think it's in the blood and I've created this. So that's your full time job and this is a side project. Well, it, it's, it's, so because uh, we produce the books at the printers as well, I can make sure the print is done correctly. Or if something's going wrong, we can fix it and, and try it out. And Tom, how big is that company? Give me an idea of the size. Uh, so last year we turned over £650,000. Yeah, great. Robust business roots and a parent company with a healthy turnover has put the entrepreneurs on firm ground in the eyes of Peter Jones. Now Tuka Suleiman wants to know whether Tom and James are willing to branch off in new directions. At the moment, the book on its own to me, is uninvestable. Because at the moment, you've done £21,000, which is negligible in the business. I need to see a bigger picture on the brand. Now, have you looked into any form of vegetable characters that you could then create physical characters that children can collect on top of your books? You know, how do you build a business? We do have other ideas at the moment. We're just in talks with Selfridges. To do what? So they've, they've got a, a, um, a campaign, Project Earth, and they think that our books will fit exactly perfect into their Project Earth campaign. So you're going back to the book. If you want me excited, you really, really should have pitched something a bit more about the vision for the brand, not just some books, because I, I, I see this more as a, a, a character play engagement with children. So, I'm out. Conflicting ideas of the company's direction leads to Tuka Suleiman decisively downing tools on any investment. Has Tej Lalvani also made up his mind? There's a lot you've got right with the business. The idea is fantastic. And part of me says I want to be part of this project because it's such a nice thing, right? And I've been thinking, yes, no, yes, no. And I think I made my decision up, actually. The difficult bit is the retail. And you've already gotten in there and you, you're making progress. And I think all you need to do is to turn on the online piece and build it. And it's not difficult to do, uh, really. I personally think that this is something for you guys, really. And just for that reason, I'm going to say, I'm out. So this is partly my heart saying this, but I, I, you know, I don't just invest with my heart. I've got to think that there actually is an opportunity here. And I will be perfectly blunt with you, I would have taken a completely different route in terms of retail. This is such a letterbox product that I would really have pumped up the online piece, particularly in lockdown, you know. Um, so I surprised myself. I was going to have a bit of a play with some carrots in there and <laughs> water that and have a, you know, enjoy listening to you and say, lovely, off you go, but I'm going to make you an offer. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to offer you all of the money. And I want 20% of the business. OK, thank you. It's an offer from the heart, as Deborah Meaden pledges all the money, but wants twice the equity that Tom and James were hoping to give away. Will Sarah Davies also feel compelled to invest? I love it. And actually, there's no way this could ever go on TV and my mum see this <laughs> and me not say I would make you an offer and ever see her again. She wouldn't speak to me. <laughs> um, you had me when you came in. So I'm also going to offer you all of the money. But I would also like 20%. A passionate Sarah Davies succumbs to parental pressure and matches Deborah Meaden's offer. Peter Jones is yet to show his hand. Is he ready to get off the fence and make it a tasty trio of bids? Wow, this is really, really strange. It's not often that I sit and just think, and I'm thinking because there are so many things that you could do. Um, and that's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes, because there's nothing wrong with being confused over future direction. Um, I'm really waffling because I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, all the do, all, do all the waffling you like. <laughs> you can waffle as much as you Playing like. Playing for time. <laughs> yeah. 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 God, I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I can't not. I am excited about it. And I'm going to offer you all of the money for 20%. Okay. Thank you very much. Peter Jones matches Deborah Meaden and Sarah Davies' offers, presenting Tom and James with a huge dilemma. Time to talk Get to talk the wall. Talk to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, thanks. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> they now have three identical bids of 20%. It's going well. <sighs> but it's double the amount of equity they wanted to give away. They're all the same. There's anyone looking at yeah. to reduce the percentage. Um, you don't want to push that, though. Uh, So first of all, thank you very much for your kind words and, and, and offers. Um, I just wanted to ask, is there any movement at all on, on that 20% um, with, with anyone at all? I genuinely think that is a fair offer for the difference I'm going to be able to make to the business, honestly. OK, thank you. Honest, thank you. I'm going to stay firm with my 20% because I think that I could add quite a lot of difference to the business. I will be flexible, purely because I want to win the investment, because I love the business and I very much want to work with you guys. So I am open to a counteroffer. Would you be willing to come down to 15% at all? Yes. OK. Oh, thank you very much. We have a deal. Um, oh. We'd like to accept that. Accept your offer. Well Tremendous. Thank you. Well done, guys. Tremendous. Thanks a lot. Tom and James leave with the investment they came for. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Well done. Thanks, and with a dragon on board who can help them sow the seeds for success. I feel absolutely elated just to have the kind words and great comments for all dragons and to walk away with an investment with Sarah is absolutely amazing. Sarah, well done. I was having that one off you, don't you worry, Peter? Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to go and ring my mum and tell her. Next into the den is St Helens-based entrepreneur Helen Davis, who's brought a couple of friends along to help her with her pitch. Wriggling worm. <laughs> and Helen's previous track record suggests she's clearly no dummy. My first business was commercial window cleaning. We turned it over in between 750 and 850,000 a year but I did decide to sell so that I could focus 100% on this. It was a tough decision, but it was the right one. As one door closes, another opens, and in this particular case, it happens to be a lift door. This is my opportunity. I've been envisaging for a while now, and I know that I'm going to feel fearful, but this is my time. I'm ready, the company's ready, 
and I'm hoping for the best. Hello Dragons, I'm Helen Davis, owner of Easy Tots. Who's this? This is my friend Lindsay and one of her gorgeous twins. This is Ollie, he's seven months old. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here today looking for a dragon or dragons to join me with an investment of £80,000 in exchange for a 20% stake in my company. Easy Tots is a four-year established, award-winning weaning brand for babies and toddlers. Our signature products include our silicon easy mat range, of which we now have four unique designs. Our most loved mat is the easy mat mini. It's a silicon suction plate with four strong suction cups. It's the only solution that acts as both a plate with suction and a lunchbox in one. It's designed with folding sides and it comes with a lid so it's easy to take out anywhere with you. To date, we've sold over 130,000 easy mats across the range, plus many more thousands of our bowls, bibs and weaning cutlery, all amounting to 1.3 million in revenue so far. Thank you very much for your time today and I look forward to you testing out our samples. Ollie's giving Peter the once over. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Say bye bye. Bye yeah. bye, Ollie. Bye. <laughs> Stickable feeding mats for babies that can be used on the go are the offering from Helen Davis, who's seeking £80,000 in return for a 20% share in her company. But with a sector savvy Tuka Suleiman first to the questions, gaining investment won't be child's play. Hi, Helen. Hi. You probably know I'm in the baby business. I, I certainly do. I know this very well. I know there's a brand which is more thicker silicon and it's more solid. They're mats without any suction cups. Yep. So they just self seal. So we do have different functions. The USP of our best selling product is that it's dual purpose so that parents can use it for everyday feeding on their high chairs, but then they can put the food in it before they go out, pop the lid on, and throw it in the bag to take anywhere. Feeding mats on the go. Yes, that, that is exactly what it, what, what it is. So explain to me um, your channels of sales. OK. I started out as an Amazon business. Um, over time, I knew that I needed to diversify that to add additional channels. So this year, 38% of our turnover has come from international distribution. And then we have an even split after that between our direct sales through our own website and Amazon sales. So give us uh, some numbers for when you started to so, date? 2016, we turned over 246,000. Yep. With a net profit of 11. And the following year was 368, with a net profit of 14. Yeah, yep. 2018? 2018. 2018 was 272,000, with a profit of only 3,000. So what happened during year three? I got my marketing strategy wrong. I had some new releases and I channeled the small marketing budget that I had into launching those and neglected the best seller. And that obviously had a knock on effect. But I have spent time after that year rethinking everything. And this year, turnover is likely to reach 550. And we are looking at a net profit of about 85 to 100. Despite some teething troubles, Helen's baby business is growing. But Sarah Davies appears preoccupied by traction of a very different kind. That took some serious pulling off. Yeah, my five-year-old daughter can't, can't remove it. Brilliant. So if I saw someone out and about with one of these and I went on Amazon to look for this, mm -hmm. are you going to come up first? In the first two years, we ranked top for suction plate, suction tray, but it's inevitable that once you're a top seller, you're going to get cheaper versions direct from factories in China. And that has happened, but we still retain our bestseller status in the category. So is it a specific strategy that you've chosen not to go with retail partners, or has that opportunity just not arose yet? I've just focused on where I can definitely see a quicker return. There is only me in the business at the moment. So do you um, do the physical pick-pack dispatch as well? Yes, I've done everything. 
Well done. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Bit of a workaholic, but it's needed. The baby entrepreneur's dedication to her burgeoning enterprise has clearly impressed Sarah Davies. But will Helen's status as a one-woman band have also struck a chord with Peter Jones? You've done incredibly well. You're a one-person business and you're doing everything end-to-end. -end. You've made about £80,000 over four years, 20000 a year. What do you pay yourself at the moment? This last year is the only year that I've actually paid myself out of the company, so I take a small salary of about 12 grand and I've took about 25 in dividends. What that does for me as an investor, it demonstrates that even if you do push the scale up, you're not going to make sufficient money to bring somebody else in to help you grow this business. And that's my concern is I think that this is a great business for you, but I don't think it's a good business for an investor. So that's why I'm going to say it's not something that I'm going to invest in today and say that I'm out. A blow for Helen as the den's longest serving dragon foresees limited reward for an investor and bows out. Will Deborah Meaden see any more scope to make this baby business boom? Here's the good news. You've mm -hmm. done a great job and quite quickly got some pretty healthy sales. But then it feels like you kind of didn't know what to do with that. You made, as we all do at the beginning, made quite a few mistakes, but you did that over a protracted period. So you've got four years of trading where really the profits are, are not... If you yeah. took your salary out, there's nothing. Yeah. In fact, there's a loss to be carried forward. So I'm afraid it's leaving me thinking I can't find the hook yeah. to hang an investment on. Mm -hmm. So I'm really sorry, Helen. I won't be investing. I'm out. Look, I want to congratulate you on what you've done so far. Thank you. But I don't think I can add value to it. So unfortunately, it's not an investment for me, so... Good luck. But I'm out. OK. Helen, the difficulty is, is it's your baby. Yep, I do believe in it. You wake up every morning, this is your life. It is, yeah. You know? And, you know, if I was to be interested in getting involved in this, you know, I'd want a substantial amount of, to basically plug it into my system. Yep. And that's not what I want to do to you. Okay. I don't want to take away your dream. On that basis, I'm not going to invest in I'm out. Right. Further disappointment for Helen as the dragon who appeared her most natural fit declined the deal. The baby entrepreneur's hopes of securing the cash she desperately needs to fund further growth now rest solely with Sarah Davies. That was a bit of a blow that then Uncle T came out at. <laughs> I, I yeah. thought, you know, given that he's big in the baby space, I actually thought this would be right up my street. I, I really did. I guess that's maybe the difference between being an investor in the sector and being a consumer or a potential consumer for the product. I'm a, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a young mum now. My, my youngest is nearly four. But I, I know what this is like mm -hmm. in terms of you'll be out somewhere at lunch, you'll see another mum has the latest innovation in the market and we all rush home, or don't even rush home, get our mobiles out <laughs> and get on to order it. Thanks, brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. I totally hear a lot of the criticism that the other dragons have levelled at you and you've had some bumps in the road. But I think you're a really credible entrepreneur. You just need a bit of help. So I'll make you an offer. Thank you, Sarah. I will offer you all of the money, all 80,000. But I would want 30% okay. of the business. Okay. And I think I've been really quite generous there. OK. Thank you, Sarah. Do you know, I don't even need to think about this. I'd love to accept your offer. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Great, well done. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Looking forward to working together, Helen. Yes, and you. Thank you. Helen has done it. It seemed that her prospects of success were slipping away, but she leaves the den with the £80,000 she was seeking and the backing of a dragon who can transform business baby steps into commercial leaps and bounds. Well, that was some experience. Um, it's pretty hairy, but exciting at the same time. We've got competition now. You she's in the baby world. I am in the baby world. I'm so over the moon with this opportunity. This is going to be a game-changing moment for our company, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the future. The last entrepreneurs to enter the den tonight are a pair of product-designing parents who are hoping that partnering with a dragon will give their fledgling business a massive growth spurt. Cheers. Dublin-based husband and wife team, James and Aileen McCauley, have brought along their model baby Sam to help with the pitch. I hope he behaves himself. Mm -hmm. But in the den, the pair's product has completely flummoxed the dragons. Is it a wombat? The entrepreneurs have two investors in mind to help nurture their young company. Tuker Sullivan has products in our area. We also really love Sarah Davies. Looks like a baby product to me. But will they manage to convince them to invest in the fruits of their labor? We need a dragon now to help us to take it where we know it deserves to be. Hello, dragons. I'm James. This is my wife, Aileen. This is baby Sam. And we're the creators of The Wriggler. The first portable changing mat designed specifically for babies and toddlers that wriggle during nappy changing. Today, we're seeking £50,000 in exchange for a 25% stake in our company. It's not surprising to learn that almost 40% of parents experience stress and frustration at nappy changing time. Once babies learn to roll, flip over or crawl away, it can take both your hands to try and keep them still and you have no hands left to change the nappy. So the regular solves this problem with its patent pending design. When you lay the baby down on the mat and the bear's arms cross the baby's body, giving them a gentle bear hug and the parent kneels on the attached knee pads the knee pads anchor the baby and the mat in place so there's no more flipping over and crawling away and your hands are freed up for a quick and easy nappy change. In the 24 months since we've launched, we sold our first thousand units. So help us to change struggles to snuggles. An assured pitch with help from an unusually well-behaved infant from entrepreneurs Aileen and James McCauley. In newborn mode, it has a cosy headrest. They're offering 25% of their hands-free baby changing mat. Then once they really start rolling, you convert it into regular mode. In return for £50,000. I'm very impressed how quick you yeah. Had, yeah, worked that one. <laughs> Two kids. Sarah Davies has mastered the mat, but it seems she has concerns over how the pair have pitched their problem-solving product. I think you undersold it. When you said 40% of parents experience stress at changing times, I find it hard to believe it's only 40%. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Thank you Thank so you. much. I think Thank it's you. really brilliant and it's innovative. Good. What I'm really interested in yeah. is what your patent covers, because if you've got an absolute watertight patent, you are hands down on to a winner. Our patent is for a baby changing mat, wherein the crossbody straps extend down into the knee controllable brace so that your knees are doing the job and allows the parents' hands be freed up. We filed in 2017 and we have it on good advice from the examiner that it looks like it will be granted and we would hope in the next six months. You've made me feel a lot better about that. It definitely sounds like you're onto a bit of a winner there. Thank you. Thank you. So, can you tell me the profile of your sales in year one and year two? In year one, we did £17,000, and in year two, just over £13,000. That is not good news for an investor. 
because you're kind of thinking this community where they do talk to each other that you'd launch it and everybody go oh it's brilliant you need this thing and off it went so what's your reasoning behind selling less in year two so in year one we had some pr coverage at the start and that led to an immediate spike in sales. OK, so what you've learned from that, it responds to PR. It absolutely, absolutely does. does. But yeah. you do need to feed that machine to say, we're here, we're here, look at us, we've got a solution for you. Yes. Deborah Meaden discovers a drop-off in sales, but also the potential for profit for the baby mat business. Tejal Alvani now wants to find out how the entrepreneurs plan to splash any cash that he might offer up. So if I invested £50,000 today, yeah. how are you going to spend it? Our targets for next year are to grow the website, go onto Amazon, and then we need to look at going internationally and going into retail. So you're not on Amazon at the no. moment? Because I, I think that's the perfect place. Someone going on there looking for changing mats. I know I did at the time. So why haven't you not gone on there in the last two years? We, that's our next step. Guys, you've come into the den with a product that solves a need. I mean, ridiculously simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Um, and as they say, best ideas are. But mine pongs. Okay. Absolutely pongs. Okay. Of cheap, nasty plastic. Yes. It smells of fish. We've t only taken them out of plastic packaging just this morning and it's a bit like taking out new runners out of a package like you're gonna have no 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 new run my runners might yeah. smell like that after i've used them but not yeah. when i bought yeah. them brand new it makes it feel cheap you want it to smell like a baby you don't want it to smell like a bag of old dry fish theo Pafitis kicks up a stink about the product's odor tuka suleiman has several baby businesses in his portfolio does he see a synergy with the duo's infant innovation? You're in the baby world, I'm in the baby world. <laughs> Correct. We've got about four or five baby brands, and we distribute to 54 countries around the world. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And we're in everywhere, Boots, Jojo. This would fit into our distribution very easily. The problem is, you've come here for 50,000. You're going to need a lot more money. Yeah. It needs a cosmetic relook at this, different colours mm -hmm. to make it a bit more appealing. You definitely you look at the smell. You know. But we do air every mat. So by the time it arrives to the customer, that but is something that can be sorted. Yeah. My concern is the fact that we could quite easily take over this business and run it for you. But I don't want to take away your baby. Yes, in some ways the regular is our third child. Having said that, like any good parent, we want it to reach its potential, so we are adaptable to whatever journey that may take. Look, I really love what you guys have done. It's Thank very you. clever, and I can see a lot of parents uh, benefiting from this. Thank you. And I am in the space in terms of the baby world, you know, can help with it online and distribution, all that area. But to me, there are a couple of gaping holes where I think that you could have done a bit more, whether it's try retail distribution or Amazon. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, on that basis, I'm gonna say I'm out. Tej Lalvani thinks the entrepreneurial parents could have pushed them at more and he becomes the first dragon to decline a deal. Theo Pafitis sniffed out a potential problem with the product, but he also has a nose for a business that can bring in the bucks. Is there a whiff of success in the air that will entice an offer? It needs marketing, it needs redevelopment, it needs a huge amount of work still. There is people in this room that are already in the baby industry sure. who will be better placed. Yeah. So I'm going to say this is not one for me, so I'm out. I'm going to tell you where I am. 
I'm not sure how valuable that patent is going to be for you because I'm not sure that there aren't going to be other ways to do this. And really, that's what you're offering. You know, you are offering this patent. So I'm really sorry, guys. I won't be investing. I'm out. What this needs is not just 50,000. It needs a bit of a product revamp. It needs a few more SKUs added to it. You've come here with a £30,000 turnover. It's tiny. Difficult one. Look, I'll tell you what I'm willing to do. This is a bizarre thing. I'm willing to give you all the money, £50,000, but I want 90% of the business and I take it over and run it. But you take a 5% royalty on sales. Okay. Then you have a little bit of skin in the game still. And what you can then do is focus on being the face of the brand. Tuka, can you just clarify where the £50,000 is going into? Well, the £50,000 really is going into the company. It's going to the company that they're going to give you 90% of. So is that money to to himself? Yourself? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. 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 The yes. Struggle, yes. Alien, that we've got there. That's exactly what's happening here. Yes. Well done. <laughs> but the money will go into the company. You will own ten percent of the company. Um, you will not be diluted ever again. How's that? Plus, you have an income. Thank you Thank for you. your offer. Tuka Suleiman makes a highly unusual proposition, offering to run the company in return for 90% equity and giving the entrepreneurs a 5% cut of any future turnover. Does Sarah Davies share his vision for the couple's concept? The thing that worries me is when people keep saying to you, you're going to need a lot more money yeah. and you keep agreeing and I think, Craigie, that would be my pocket we'd be looking at for that money. We feel that with the investment that we can grow sales of 8,500 units next year, 11,500 in year two, and 18,000 in year three with a net profit of 110,000. We feel that that is absolutely achievable and that you won't need to invest lots of extra yeah. money. Well, look, I think it's a great product. Thank you. Thanks. So I will make you an offer. So I'll offer you all of the money but I would expect 40% of the company. Thank you, Sarah, and yep. we are um, really appreciative of that. I guess, to be honest, I'm also trying to wrap my head around the idea of uh, Tuker's offer because it is quite unusual. You want to go in the back, want to think about it between you? Yeah, yeah, we've a lot to think about there. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Sarah Davies is offering the entrepreneurs the £50,000 they're seeking for 40% of their company, 15% more than was originally up for grabs. What do you mean? Tuka Suleiman has put a very different deal on the table. It's not the biggest equity demand that we've seen in the den, but it is certainly a substantial one, as he demands 90% of the company in return for 5% of all future turnover. With two such differently structured offers, will the duo be able to push through a deal that they're happy with? We had previously discussed we would be willing to give 30% mm. of the company. So, Sarah, we're wondering, would you consider coming down to 30%? If you're prepared to go 35, we can... Virtually shaken, have a okay. look. Thank you Thank for you. your offer, Tuker. But, Sarah, we'd be delighted to take your offer. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> look at that! <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. Thanks a million. Thank you. Take care. 
James and Aileen leave the den with the £50,000 they were seeking and a newborn relationship with one of the dragons they had their sights on. Over, Over the, the moon. moon. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> chuffed. We did it. Having Sarah on board with us is just a dream come true. It's like adding rocket fuel, we yeah. hope, to the business, so we're very excited.